Hello everyone, my name is Yu Wang. I'm from UESTC. Our title is Non-Interactive Zero-Knowledge Proofs with Fine Green Security. It's John Warwick with Jashin Pan. In standard cryptography, we usually require that the only party runs in polynomial time, and a polynomial time adversary cannot break the system. By now, there have been a lot of constructions proposed based on various assumptions, such as the one function factoring discrete logarithm DDHOWE, or even the generic or algebraic groups. But it's still unclear whether these assumptions hold, so it's desirable to construct primitives based on no assumptions or just some mild complexity worst case assumptions. But in the long history of cryptography, it has turned out that this is quite difficult. But fine grain cryptography gives us a way to approach this problem. In the fine grain setting, we just require that the owner's party uses less resources than the adversary, and the resources of the adversary can be a prior bounded. Since the power of the adversary is limited, it's possible to construct primitives based on very mild assumptions. But notice that in the fine grain setting, we also require that the scheme should be quite efficient. The field of fine grain cryptography was initialized by Marco, and there have been many fine grain primitives proposed, such as the key exchange one way function, PKE, verifiable computation, triple one way function, and ABE. But it's still unclear where the NISC, which is one of the most important primitive in cryptography, exists in the fine grain setting. Now, let's briefly recall the definition of NISC. In NISC, the prover wants to prove that some statement X is in some language L, and there are five algorithms. Gen outputs some binding CRS, and Tgen outputs some hiding CRS and a trapdoor. The prover unimput the CRS, the statement, the win is W, and generate the proof, and the simulator wants to simulate the proof by making use of the trapdoor without knowing the witness. The verifier just checks whether the proof is valid. A NISC is required to satisfy three properties, which are completeness, perfect soundness, and composable zero knowledge. Completeness says that only proofs must pass the verification. Perfect soundness says that when the CRS is binding, then there exists no valid proof for some statement not in the language. Composable zero knowledge says that a binding CRS and a hiding CRS are indistinguishable, and when the CRS is binding, then the simulator perfectly simulates the only proof. Actually, by now, there have been several fine grained proof systems proposed, such as the hash proof system proposed by Agassar and others, a QE NISC proposed by Wang and others, and a NISC with the inefficient prover proposed by Bo and others. All of the existing proof systems in the fine grained setting are secure against adversaries in NC1 under the assumption that NC1 is not equal to parity L slash poly. NC1 is the class of circuits with the logarithmic depth, and parity L slash poly is the class of languages with polynomial sized branching programs. Here notice that the assumption that NC1 is not equal to parity L slash poly is quite mild, and this assumption is widely believed to hold. But there are limitations on the existing proof systems. For the hash proof system, the verifier cannot verify publicly. The reason is that it needs a secret key. For the QE NISC, it just supports the linear languages and a CRS should be dependent on the language parameter. And for the NISC with the inefficient prover, it's actually not in the fully fine-grained setting. The reason is that the prover needs more computation resources than C1. It has to run in polynomial time. So an honest user might use more power than the adversary. In this work, we propose the first fully fine-grained NISC for NC1 circuit satisfiability. In our construction, all the CRS generator, the prover, the verifier, and the simulator run in NC1, and the construction is secure against all the adversaries in NC1, 
the assumption is the same as before, which is that NC1 is not equal to pi tl slash 40. Notice that our needs supports all the statements verifiable in NC1. We also note that a statement circuit cannot go beyond NC1. Otherwise, even the only prover in NC1 cannot decide with the witness whether the statement is true or not. This is the real map of our construction. At first, we construct a sigma particle, and then we compile this sigma particle to a NISC for linear languages. Afterwards, we compile this NISC for linear languages to an O proof, and by making use of this O proof, we achieve our NISC for NC1 circuit satisfiability. Now, I will briefly introduce how we construct this sigma particle. In our sigma particle, the prover wants to prove that some statement x is in the span of m, where m is some matrix in the language parameter. In the first round, the prover randomly samples some matrix R and sends m times R, which is denoted by C in our case, to the verifier. In the second round, the verifier sends some random string, which is the challenge, back to the prover. We denote this by k. In the third round, the prover sends the response d back to the verifier. d is equal to rw times a, and the verifier just checks whether cx times a is equal to m times d. Here, a is the transpose of the concatenation of a constant matrix S and Sk. Specifically, S is the transpose of the concatenation of a zero vector and an identity matrix I. We can prove that our sigma particle satisfies all the properties that a sigma particle should have, which are completeness, special soundness, and special oneness verifier zero knowledge. Next, I will introduce how we compile our sigma particle to a needs for linear languages. Before introducing our construction, we first recall a lemma proved by the Greek and others, which says that two distributions, 0 sample and 1 sample, are indistinguishable against NC1 adversaries if NC1 is not equal to parity L slash poly. Here, 0 sample outputs a, a rank deficient matrix M0 and a vector S in its kernel, and 1 sample outputs a full rank matrix M1. So this lemma basically says that a rank deficient matrix and a full rank matrix are indistinguishable against NC1 if our complexity assumption holds. Then in our sigma particle, we first change the distribution of S to L sum prime, where L sum prime is some intermediate algorithm in zero sum. In this case, the distribution of the transpose of A will become zero sum. And then we set A as the hiding CRS. And we set K, which was the challenge sent by the verifier in the second round, as the trouble. Now the proof consists only of the first and third round messages. Now we can see that the sigma particle becomes a NISC. The completeness of the needs follows from that of the sigma particle, and the zero knowledge of the needs follows from the special oneness verifier zero knowledge of the sigma particle. Soundness follows from the fact that when we switch the distribution of the transpose of A from zero sum to one sum, the kernel of A will become empty, and there will be no invalid X that can pass the verification. So this is how we achieve the needs for linear languages. And next, I will talk about how we compile these needs for linear languages to an O proof. In the O proof, the prover wants to prove that for two matrices M0 and M1, either X0 is in the span of M0 or X1 is in the span of M1. Let's say that XJ is in the span of MJ where uh, the witness is W. To generate the proof, 
The prover first splits the CRS of the NISC for linear languages, which was denoted by A, into a binding CRS AJ and a hiding CRS A1 minus J with the trapdoor K prime. Then it generates proofs for AJ and A1 minus J with the witness W and the trapdoor K prime, respectively, by making use of the prover and the simulator of our NISC for linear languages. The sum list follows from the fact that when A is binding, which means that the transpose of A was sampled from one sample, then either A0 or A1 must be binding. Zero knowledge follows from the fact that when A was sampled from zero sample, then both A0 and A1 must be hiding. So this is how we achieve the all proof. Next, uh, we talk about how we convert this all proof into a needs for circuit satisfiability. In our needs for an NC1 circuit satisfiability, without loss of generality, we just consider statement circuits consisting only of NAND gates. At first, the prover extends the witness to contain the bits of all wires. Next, we use the DVB NC1 function PKE to encrypt all the bits. Here in the DVB PKE, the public key and secret key pair is sampled from the zero sample. And for the final output, we should be one if the witness is valid. We set the output ciphertext as a fixed ciphertext for one. The DVB PKE has two nice properties that are useful in our case. The first one is active homomorphism, and the second one is that a ciphertext is in the span of the public key A if and only if the plain text is equal to zero. Now for each NAND gate with the input ciphertext CTI, CTJ, and output ciphertext CTK, the prover proves that the ciphertext satisfies a relation supported by our all proof. Specifically, the relation says that E plus CTI plus CTK and E plus CTJ are in the span of A, or E plus CTK and e, uh, CTJ are in the span of A. Here, A is the fixed ciphertext for the plain text 1. Now we can prove that if the ciphertext satisfies the relation, then the corresponding plain texts WI, WJ, and WK must be a valid input output tuple of the NAND gate. Specifically, WI, WJ, and WK should satisfy the 1 plus WI plus WK is equal to 0 and 1 plus WJ is equal to 0 or 1 plus WK is equal to 0 and WJ is equal to 0. Then the soundness of the resulting needs follows from the fact that we can extract a value witness from a value proof by decrypting the ciphertexts. Zero knowledge follows from the fact that uh, when we switch the distribution of A, which is the public key of the underlying DVV PKE, from zero sample to one sample, then the ciphertexts will become random matrices and they will contain no useful information. And also the all proofs will reveal no useful information as well due to its zero knowledge. So this is how we achieve our NISC for NC1 circuit satisfiability. Notice that in our construction, the proof size is dependent on the circuit size, which means that the proof size might be very large if the statement circuit is very large. Besides our needs for NC1 circuit satisfiability, we propose a fine-grained fully homomorphic encryption for ACCM02 circuits. Here, ACCM02 can be treated as the class of all the polynomials with constant degree. Our starting point for constructing this fully homomorphic encryption is the DVV PKE, which was already actively homomorphic. And the main challenge is to achieve the multiplicative homomorphism. Our solution is a tricky way to extend the ciphertext of the DVVPK from vectors to matrices. For the details, please see our paper. 
by making use of this fully homomorphic encryption, we can convert our O proof into a NISC for ACCM02 statement circuits. The class of statement circuits supported by this NISC is more restricted compared with our NISC for NC1 circuit satisfiability, but we note that it has a nice property that the proof size is independent with the circuit size, which means that the proof size could be very short, even if the statement circuit is very large. As extensions of our work, we propose a converging from our NISCs to non-interactive ZAPs. Here, non-interactive ZAP means an IWI in the plane model. To achieve our goal, we first prove that our NISCs have verifiable correlated key generation. And then we make use of the GOS converging technique proposed by Gross and others to convert our NISCs to non-interactive ZAPs. All the NISCs we talked about before are in the CRS model, and we also proposed converging from our NISCs to ones in the URS model, where the CRS is just some random string. At the core of our construction, we proved that a random matrix with some particular form is a binding and a hiding CRS with half of probability. And by running our NISC with the random CRS for the same statement for multiple times in parallel, we immediately achieve a NISC in the URS model. The zero knowledge of the resulting NISC follows from the zero knowledge of the NISC in the CRS model. And the statistical soundness follows from the fact that for multiple random strings, at least one should be binding with overwhelming probability. So this is the conclusion of our work. In our work, we proposed several proof systems that are secure against NC1 adversaries under the assumption that NC1 is not equal to PyTL slash poly. Our results include a NISC for NC1 circuit satisfiability, a NISC for ACCM02 circuits with short proofs, and non-interactive ZAPs and NISCs in the URIs model. To achieve our NISC for ACCM02 circuits, we also proposed a fully homomorphic encryption for ACCM02 circuits. Thank you.